In the next set of videos, I'm going to look at different styles of CPUs. I'm going to start with a really simple design that executes an entire instruction in a single cycle. I'll then describe a multi-cycle CPU that takes multiple cycles to execute one instruction. And then we'll finally move on to a pipelined design. So let's first start with what the basic requirements are from this simple CPU. So it should be capable of performing basic math operations. So this is very similar to the capabilities of the 32-bit ALU that we had designed a few weeks ago. This design should also be capable of memory accesses. So it should be capable of exchanging values between registers and memory with load and store instructions. And then it should be capable of basic control flow. So it should support a simple instruction like branch on equal to as well as jump instructions. Okay, so these are the basic instructions that will be supported by our simple architecture. It's not hard to extrapolate this design to support more instructions, but then it just becomes more complicated and you get bogged down in details. So to get the concepts out more clearly, we'll just focus on these simple instructions and see what it takes to support these in our, in our simple processor. Now, if you look at the overall design, there are a few basic requirements of this architecture. So firstly, we need some kind of memory unit, right? We know that instructions are stored in memory. We know that all of the data that the program processes is also going to be stored in memory. So we need some kind of memory unit to keep track of both instructions and data. For now, I'll make the simple assumption that there are separate units to store instructions and to store data. And later you'll see why this is important and why this leads to a more efficient design. In addition, of course, we need registers. That's the scratch pad where we get our input operands from and where our results get stored. Then we need an ALU similar to the 32-bit ALU that we designed before. And then we need a whole bunch of control logic that decides how an instruction navigates through the various circuits, what inputs are provided to each circuit and where each output goes to. Then in addition to that, you'll see that the early part of this processor design is going to be common to every single instruction. So there is a register referred to as the program counter that tells me where in the program I am, and that gets updated every cycle. And based on that program counter value, a certain instruction is going to be fetched from the instruction memory. And that instruction is going to specify which register operands need to be read. Right? And accordingly, those register values then get read from the register file. So all instructions are going to have this early part in common because every instruction needs to do these basic operations. Once you've done all of this, then you may start diverging. You know, different instructions then take different paths through the different circuits. Okay, But this early part is common to everyone. 